This is the one I wanted. Did you want her? Don't put it to your nipple. I gotta touch that later. <laughs> Caesar, don't act like you're surprised. <laughs> I have to adjust. You gonna adjust my nipple? Can I? Ow! Oh, you're hurting me! <laughs> Yeah, you gotta see this. Look at this shit. He's hurting me. <coughs> Where are my people? Get, have my back. And action. Punk rock is not about uh, success. We would all do this if there was no money, because No Effects did it for eight years with no money. It's how much fun you can have, and you know what real success is in life? It's how much fun you have. No fucking money, and I can say that because I make a lot of money. It's not the money that gives me happiness. Hanging out with my friends and do what I want. Roll over and shake and bang for the bone. Leave it alone. I think uh, punk is something that a lot of people, um, you know, believe is a only a youth movement. But I think that's because when you're young. Uh, it comes very natural to be uh, anti-authoritarian. We're not going to do what you tell us to do because we don't like it for these reasons, and we're going to re rebel against you, and we're going to we're going to write songs about it. We're going to scream it really loud, and we're going to be super fucking annoying, like a like a goddamn fucking mosquito buzzing in your ear until you listen. So, I think the short form is that it's uh, it's freedom of expression and it's uh, constantly questioning. I'm going to uh, look for my own answers, and if I find people that have found the answers I've found, then that makes us a community. As it gave me that outlet when I was a kid, that outlet of anger, it has given me the outlet in life to become the man that I have become. For me, a way of uh, finding my finding my people. Kind of artists in their own way, expressing themselves through music and art and whatever, poetry and fashion or whatever. It's not just this mohawk, spike jacket thing. I mean, sure, that's one factor of it, but it's so much more. And it's, it's your heart. It's being an individual. Try to be different. Try to push boundaries. Never be complacent. You were able to write your own music, play your own music, put out your own records. It was very, you know, that's the ultimate liberty. It was great. Means do what you want and uh, find out why you're doing it. Hey, do what you want, but don't do it around me. I don't listen to space, you're free to have the free. I'll sit on my house a goddamn day. I'll be some of it, can't point with no thing to say what you must. Do all you can, break all the fans and go to hell with Superman and die like a champion. Now, hey! Yeah, yeah, I don't know if the villains will survive, but I believe in God when one and one are five. But my crew is there, but I'm watching to the core. Turn on the film and us to pass through our door. So do what you must. Do all you can Break all the fucking rules And go ahead with Superman Die like a champion Go ahead Go ahead What punk rock has meant to me is It is my education It was my high school It was my university It is still uh, a learning experience Every day that I wake up <laughs> With 
concerns about is uh, everything that I hated about going to shows. This is the opposite of. No kids allowed, free beer, only five bands, five good bands. And my job was to make it, my job was to make this a great time. It's not about the music as much as it's about the experience. It was Cameron Collins idea. Yeah, we started with an idea of doing a beer and music festival that uh, originally was going to be a reggae festival and then somehow we ended up booking just a bunch of punk rock bands which was natural for us being punk rock fans. And we felt like that punk and drublick was perfect. It was the perfect way to bring craft beer and punk rock together because the punk rock fans are getting older. <laughs> The idea was was for us to do 21 and over, 21 plus, which anyway, Mike thought was a good idea in theory, hated that it was going to be 21 bands. And why do you want 21 bands? When I go to a show, I want to see two bands, or three. So, and they said, it's going to be free beer, and I'm like, really? Free beer? I like this. The fans dug it. They got to drink free beer for four hours. Got to pay 40, 40, 40, 45 bucks and come in. And for the first three hours, four hours of the festival, they could drink 150 different craft beers. It was holy shit, what a concept. But no, no 21 bands. And they wanted to do one show in LA. And I said, let's try this. Let's do six cities. It's got to be no effects in bad religion. Well, um, you know, I mean, Having Fat Mike barge into our dressing room every night is uh, one of the highlights of my day. So, uh, as far as the festival that uh, those guys have put together, I think it's one of the greatest uh, collection of bands and collection of, of uh, older punkers uh, on the planet. Uh, the fact that they, they got, you know, combined it with a beer festival, um, I guess it makes sense. I'm not a huge beer drinker, but uh, it makes sense that that uh, you know something as spirited as uh, drinking beer and all the great craft breweries that have come come up in the last ten years now have a place. Uh, I think a fitting background for them is the punk rock scene because uh, they're both based on independence and sort of going against the grain. Fuck Fat Mike and your free beer, you fucking communist. <laughs> Why <Well>, think? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, people like Mike or us or, or other sort of creative people, they're always coming up with reasons to do what you do. You know, I, 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 I've spent my life in and around musicians in Hollywood who 90% of the time they were waiting for someone to do something for them. Fuck them. Do it for yourself. This is, that's what this is. This is just like, I'm tired. I want to go have a beer party. Whatever, just, you know, make a fucking phone call and all of a sudden you've got a tour happening with, with your friends. It's fucking pretty cool, man. I feel like it's put more life into us, or at least into me. Been doing this for so long that I really enjoy playing, but playing clubs gets a little old, play this or that, you know, it's, it's, it's new energy. And, and I really, really, really like that. I really like that and it feels special. Music did so much, I think, on a human level and kind of like a family level, you know, kind of bringing people together in a kind of community.
you know what I mean? This whole like punk and drill, like this whole festival, but just the bands and the and the crowd, it feels like family. Like everyone's singing along, and we all we all kind of we all you know punk rock brought us all together, and I think it's um, it's really special. It's beautiful. family it's a unit unification and punk can mean everything to anybody else sometimes it's it's just apathy and anarchy and just fuck you sometimes it's political and trying to do revolution changes but for me it's about it's about unity this is my family this is my family this is my family Music is like, I, it's all I've done my entire life is write songs and perform and be in bands and be in punk bands. So this is just like um, all I've ever known. And um, music is like my family and the road is my home. Keep going and if you fail, you fail. More than likely you will fail at your dreams. Not everybody can, can live out this, you know, not everybody's gonna be a professional basketball player. Not everybody's gonna be a touring musician. Not everybody's gonna be that successful, but you have to try. And you should, you should enjoy that journey of trying, because even if you did fail, you're doing more than most people are being complacent. So enjoy the moments you have, but, but keep, keep moving forward and keep trying to evolve. Step to the plane to swing and miss And it's a complicated life When how you live is how you die There's something to be said for continuing to play music, whether it's for five people or 50,000 people, that it's a... Uh, it is a lifelong pursuit, and if you're truly passionate about it, uh, it, it becomes this something you can't, it's something that you can't function without. And um, for me, it was many years ago when I realized that I was useless to society in any other way, and um, have played guitar every day since then. And that's, uh, you know, that's kind of, I think that's what it really takes. Um, 
to to follow this path is uh, you have to really you have to be serious about it. it. Has to matter to you. Just for me, but as for you, a memory. I genuinely am a fan of punk rock. Uh, I've been a fan of NoFX, you know, back going into junior high and high school, you know, we used to listen to No Effects and Bad Religion and, you know, all these bands that we're now doing all these shows with. So, you know, there's that statement, people are like, what would you do if you won the lottery? And I'm like, this, I'm doing what I want to do. Are you kidding? Like, who gets to do this? My job is beer and punk rock. This is really easy. <laughs> we came up with a concept and we put it on sale and it crushed and we killed it. And we killed it at, uh, in Seattle, Washington, Boise, Idaho, Southern California. We did it at the beach and did, sold out to 12, 13, 14,000 people at the sand. Fatty loved it, the guys in the band loved it. We had a great relationship, everything was fantastic. I've been doing craft beer festivals for you know 10 years now. Um, everything we've done has been on the West Coast. And three years ago, you know, we hadn't done anything out of Southern California. All of a sudden, fast forward six, seven, eight months, and here we are, and we're in Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia, and Massachusetts, and all these places that, like, I haven't even been to Philadelphia, but I'm doing a festival there, and um, which was great. You know, obviously, John had a lot of experience uh, in doing, you know, big tours and things like that. But uh, it, it's been it's been surreal. It's been fun, like learning the alcohol laws in every city and state, and you know, trying to work with their different governing bodies as to like, you know, you can do this here, but you can't do that here. And it's like, but why? Anyway, figuring all that stuff out has been, it's a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. Um, obviously it's been worth it though. Punkin' Drumlick Fest, it's an interesting thing just because it's sort of like if Warp Tour grew up. And I think that's kind of a cool thing because obviously us and no effects are of an advanced age these days. And we don't really fit in with the Warp Tour crowd so much anymore. So this kind of lets us and our fans still do the Warp Tour without having to go hang out with 15 year olds and feel like creepy dudes. <laughs> you know, we're playing to, we're playing to our people. You know, you know what you're, when you want to come see NoFX Bad Religion, like that's, you know what's happening there. You know, people, we both fit together very well, I think. It's called You Are The Government. Let's go. Listen and I'll tell you when you're wrong Eradicate, put pin the can as pirates 
gets along Here in town, one captain maintains its so kind of sad As all more he maintains your kind of ass Let's go There's a loser in the house and a puppet on a stool And a new way of life that a black with victim who won't And as people pay, the moral fabric dies And country can't be dead, they know it's people's cries Cause you are the government You are jurisprudence You are the foundation You are jurisdiction And I make a difference We're playing Suffer because it's the anniversary of Suffer. And we're not doing it every show. I mean, we've done it for a couple because we just learned the record recently and it's still fun. Um, but we're not gonna, every, every Punk and Droplet show isn't gonna be the same. I mean, Bad Religion shows, we, we really try to change it um, from day to day, so. It's very rare that you get to see an entire album being played um, in the span of a concert because uh, usually in order to make it a good concert, you have to pick songs from various parts of your uh, catalog. But Suffer was only like 22 minutes long. So for us, we can play the entire song, uh, the entire album, 15 songs in like 22 minutes. And uh, it's a real challenge for us too. It's a lot of fun to just play it uh, with the amount of space between songs that's on the album. Uh, Bad Religion played 25 fucking songs. We're gonna talk for 25 minutes. Yeah, we're gonna play 15 you songs and talk hit. a lot. Rugly. You got a flathead screw? No, but they think they can fucking beat us by playing the best record ever, Suffer, right? No, they can't fucking do that. We're gonna play their first record, How Can Hell Be, it? How Can Hell Be Any Words, in its... In its entirety. We're gonna play How Can Hell Be Any Words for Bad Religion, the whole fucking album. Here we go. Bad Religion, they're ACDC. They do their job so great, they have such great songs, and every song is perfect. And I can't remember my lyrics. Or, and I, tonight I play pretty good, but I make mistakes all the time. We all, we, we make mistakes in the majority of our songs. Who cares? It's charming. Why did any of us start a punk band? Because we love punk rock. If you start a punk band to become popular, then fuck you. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi.
20 years. My whole career with this band, we have never scripted anything. Nothing has been planned. It's, we just go up there and have fun, be ourselves. We fuck with each other on stage. We fuck with the audience and just try to have fun. So it's not really a set show, you know. You go to a different, you go to a no effects show every night, it's going to be a little different. We're going to be, you know, there's a lot of improv. There's a lot of clowning and... <laughs> When we first got El Jefe in the band, he goes, I've only, I saw the Vandals once and I've heard of suicidal tendencies. That's what he said. And, and I said, I like the band Narada. He said he liked the band Narada. Narada. <laughs> it's a neurotic said, version of Nirvana. Nirvana. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's the band I like. Duncan Shin. Thank, Thank you for you. coming to the, the Punk and Drublick Beer, Craft Beer Festival. Yes. They came to me last year and said, you want to do this craft beer festival? I said, how about we do a fucking vodka and cocaine festival? <laughs> no, don't do cocaine. And they said... You know how hard it is to get a permit for that? Yeah, it's I'd rather super do hard to get festival. a permit for that. So we went with beer. We went with beer and no children. Hey! <laughs> how many of you got a babysitter tonight? Yeah, who has babysitters? Yeah. Who just left your kids at home with a remote? Yeah! Why was that? Is that bad? Because kids don't know shit about punk rock. They shouldn't be here. And they don't know shit about reggae because white Jews know a lot about reggae. Yeah. This is a weed smoking song. Y'all bust out and blaze up. You know why NoFX is headlining? No one can argue that no effects, we have the most fun than any other band. We do. We laugh and we laugh and we laugh on stage. And that's why people love us. Because uh, it's just fucking real. It's not an act. A punk rock band facing major backlash after that band, No FX, made a joke about the Las Vegas mass shooting while performing at a concert in downtown Las Vegas. News 3's Nathan O'Neill joins us with this viral video. People cannot believe the words that came out of their mouths. Yeah, and the band was on stage right here in Las Vegas when they made that joke about the Route 91 mass shooting, which targeted a crowd of concert growers. Now, some are calling for a boycott of the band, calling their joke both cruel and disgusting. <laughs> Man, I'm not getting shot in Vegas unless you're, I mean, if you're in a country band. What some are calling a tasteless joke, getting a cold response first from the crowd and now from the Las Vegas community at large. The video shows punk rock band No FX joking about not getting shot following a performance Sunday at the Punk Rock Bowling and Music Festival in downtown Las Vegas. That joke made just six miles from the site where 58 people were killed and hundreds more injured as a result of the October mass shooting. The band's joke refers to the victims saying, quote, at least they were country fans and not punk rock fans. That comment being called disgusting and callous. And I reached out to the band No FX. We have not received a response, but organizers of that music festival, they did release a statement a short time ago apologizing for what was said on stage. They said they do not condone it and that there is nothing funny about people being shot and murdered ever. Never in my whole life have I ever wished I, you know, I, there was one thing I didn't say. You know, if, the, the, if there was one thing. You know what happened in Vegas? What happened in Vegas is that Eric Melvin said something that was uh, insensitive. Uh, something I probably would not have brought up, but he's my buddy and he said something and the crowd was like, mm. so I tried to save him and I said something worse. So I saved him because people were more mad at me now. So then the Las Vegas thing happens uh, on the Sunday, I believe, the week before Camp, An Camp Anarchy. The Sunday was uh, his show at Punk Rock Bowling. 
when the whatever was what the specifics that were said on stage created an uproar. By Tuesday, it was national news. It was on TMZ. By Tuesday afternoon, I had bands that were on Camp Anarchy, their agents calling me, telling them they would not perform. So I'm in a catch-22. Mike and I, Mike and I are discussing it. Cameron Collins and I are discussing it. And then all of the sponsors pull out. Uh, Stone Brewery, who did our beer, pulled completely out. Rockstar Energy Drink, who was the sponsor, pulled out. Three or four other sponsors pulled out because of what was said on stage in um, Las Vegas. So I call Mike, I'm like, what do we do? And Cameron, and what do we do? And the decision was made to pull him off the show because it was too, too much of a hot issue. And we didn't, you know, we felt like it was the best decision to pull him out the show. just came crashing down and we actually got to see the camp punk and drubbing thing happen all our work and all our idea idealisms and whatnot and um, but without us you know and everyone was there having having a great time and like we were like the kids who were homesick from school kind of or like you know we were we were basically banned from our own creation and man that was just awful you know uh, it was heartbreaking because Ohio was uh, that was really my brainchild you know with, we had bondage massage and uh, the wheel of misfortune there was supposed to be rock throwing but they didn't do it if I was there we would have had rock throwing and but mostly you know Fletcher from Pennywise and Rancy dudes, and you know, I was going to be there four days, and I was supposed to hand out drinks, hand out beers to every person who walked in. Me and Fletcher were going to do that, and uh, uh, I was just here. You know, we all make mistakes. You know, we know. I've known Fat Mike for 25 years or something like this, and you know, we're like a family. And I know that him and Melvin and the rest of the guys are all good people, and they they're not violent. They're they're not condoning violence and they want to make the world a better place too. Like literally, Mike's songs, Mike sings about uncomfortable subjects. He tackles things that people don't want to talk about and he puts humor, he makes it humorous when you're talking about something really hardcore. It's, a, it's just a sign of the times. Everybody is watching, you know? Not saying that it's right, not defending him, but that's what they do, you know, when you're, especially being a front man on stage, you make off the cuff jokes. I say some nasty shit to people or whatever, you know, but it's, it's never, you know, a premeditated thing. Uh, I think it sucks that the, the backlash of it, you know, and it, another thing is a lot of people who would never give a shit, but now that it's on social media, they're all like, you know, I'm a champion of, of you know, being politically correct. And I'm sure half those people aren't politically correct, you know, probably say worse shit in their house. You know, look at the president we have in the White House right now. He's just a fucking entertainer. He says horrible, horrible things all the time with no consequence. And you know, how is that accepted when a punk rocker, punk rocker, whatever you want to call us, goes up there and, and you know, puts on a show and, and says some things that are inappropriate. But you know what? There wasn't that intention behind it. So he's a wonderful person and he's given us everything in a career. And I would not be here without Mike. And, you know, for him to put on this festival and continue it, I really hope there's a future for it. And we'll be a part of it as long as we can. Well, it's obviously a very last minute thing, very surprising, and, 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 but we're more than happy to do it. I mean, we're friends of no effects and, uh, you know, we want to help them out, obviously. And we want to help the festival out. And, and so that's, that's, you know, when they called us last minute, I mean, we were just lucky enough to be able to all be available and figured we could do this. It's just a one off. And, we haven't played a festival in a while, so it's, it's, it's fun to get back into this festival environment. You know, I, I think it's, it's a shame what happened, but we can, we can definitely just try to make, make the best of it, and that's kind of what we're trying to do.
Descendants stop by for a little visit. Make some goddamn noise for our hometown heroes. And then there's another band that comes from Hermosa Beach, California, the best band of all time. They're called the Circle Jerks. This song is by the Circle Jerks. It's called Wild in the Streets. Hey, Morris, where are you? Wild in the Streets. Ready, ready. Everybody's just having a good time, so it, it's been an awesome weekend, and sick of it all is going on in a minute. And we got the Boston's, we got Rancid, I got a gallon of rum in there, so life is fucking good. I could see, I saw some of the footage. Um, people were FaceTiming me from the show and I could see like the crowd chanting like, no FX, no FX. And it was like, oh, I want to be there guys, you know? Uh, but we fucked up. <laughs> we fucked up bad. My closest friend, Manolia, Manolia, supports my head. Give me something to believe That's me on the beach side Metal meter in my hand Smart in a pocket You know what, honestly, I don't think his fans gave a fuck. In fact, I got spit on at the first year of Camp Anarchy. I went up on stage one time and announced they weren't going to play. 
and people booed me and threw shit at me and spit on me. So nobody gave a fuck about what he did in Las Vegas. Who gave a fuck about what he did in Las Vegas are corporations and uh, entities and cities and states. They were the ones pissed. And agents and other bands and everything. But his fans, I found that out that night. That's when I knew on that Friday night, June 6th, when I walked up on stage to tell the crowd, hey, we're so sorry that, that No Effects is not performing, blah, 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 blah. And people gave two fucks. What's up, Thornville, Ohio? That's where you people are right now. Turn this fucking mic up as loud as it fucking goes so everybody in this place can hear my voice. My name is John Reese. This is Cameron Collins. We've spent the last four months putting this thing together. Fuck you too. I love you for that. As you know, as everybody on this stage knows, the last week, shut the fuck up and listen to me or I'll stop talking. I have a snow, I'm just kidding guys, I'm just kidding. I have, a, I have something that I want to read to you guys that's heartfelt that we wrote, okay? That you guys are here with us right now, spending the weekend. I feel you. Trust me, trust me, I feel you. All right, great, I get it, I get it, I, I get it. I'm gonna read this statement that we've written to each and every one of you, and it's heartfelt. Welcome everybody to Camp Punk and Drumlick. Today, today, this weekend, we make history. Together. This weekend on June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 2018, we achieve the achievable. This weekend, we make our mark and scream at the top of our lungs, Punk is not dead. Punk is not dead. All right, I got you, dude. Each and every one of you tonight are a part of history. Never before has such an assembly of punk rock legends and the fans who have supported and have ascended on this venue this weekend. Together, each and every one of 20,000 of you, together we make history. And you're all part of it. I love you all, guys. Fucking the Vandals are up next. Thank you. I knew right then, the Punk and Trouble brand is fine, alive and well. Whatever he said can be got through. He, you know, he made a mistake. Uh, Eric made a mistake. What the fuck ever. But, uh, you know, I apologized. I took my medicine. And we didn't get to play shows for, I don't know, a year and a half. No effects that every show canceled in the U.S. Mm. Which is, uh, whatever. Things happen. Well, we had the shows cancel in the US, but we went to Europe and it was amazing. It was awesome to go to Europe right after this because 
Europe was great. You know, us in Bad Religion and, and other bands that weren't on this tour, Sick of It All and Strung It Out and bands that are, uh, and Pennywise, we toured with Pennywise a lot in Europe. And it was just, uh, the shows were huge and it was a relief because Europe has, you know, been good to no effect since 1989. So, no effects is stuck with maybe a year off. We've never had that, this much time off before. So, uh, and I was kind of depressed. So, you know, what do I do? I drink a lot and uh, take things that make me stay awake and write songs. Uh, the Gimme Gimme's are recording. We haven't recorded in a while. I've been recording Cokie the Clown, No Effects songs, Home Street Home songs, and now Gimme songs. So I'm working on five projects. Normal for me. The worst thing ever is having a day where you don't have anything to do. <sighs> when that happens, I just get tied up. Or I spend some time in the trunk. When I'm bored, I just go into my trunk. <sighs> you didn't think I was this weird, did you? Can you help me out now? <laughs> 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 do this thing. That's what you do. I need to get out. And then the person comes and lets you out. Sometimes. <laughs> Sounds great with the big muff. Awesome. Sounds like sounds like gimme's. Big muff, it's like suddenly like shit. Fucking big muff, dude, I'm telling you. Fucking pop it. Sounds thick. 2019, we are gonna go back to the US and Canada and in Europe again. So uh, I can't wait. ago or last May or May, April. Fuck yeah, it was last May. A year ago right now when that shit went down, it was like a kick in the stomach to me. Like, I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God, you know? We got kicked off of our own tour by the promoters and by the, by the, um, by the uh, sponsors and all that stuff. Our booker was saying, yeah, no one's gonna book you guys. You know, all this fucking really dramatic shit. 
and it really it really hurt because this band means a lot to me and playing means a lot to me but now everything's calmed down it's a year later i feel like okay cool it's time to play you know What's very interesting is that the thing about Punkadrelic is it was working well in the U.S. and then I brought it to Europe. This is the second year in Europe and it's working everywhere. Our smallest show is 4,000 people up to 10,000 and we did not expect the numbers to be so good because, uh, you know, No Effects in Bad Religion by ourselves, we don't draw that well, but I think it's kind of magical, No Effects in Bad Religion. Believe it or not, uh, punk is one of the musical um, movements, if you will, that uh, is very consistent. Whether we go to South America, Europe, North America, Japan, Australia, there seems to be a very strong community feel, a feel like the music means something. It's important to the way they live their lives. And somehow, um, it's retained that all these years. Interesting man. Um, I love Fat Mike. He's uh, we've spent a lot of time together over the years and had a lot of uh, been in a lot of it's interesting situations, um, and I'm sure that there will be many more. Yeah, yeah, but but, but anal punching is great. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I'm ah. a fuck. I'm a fucking 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 fucking. <laughs> <self -fucking. laughs> What are you doing? Fucking, fucking. My girlfriend's gonna beat you up. What are you doing? Quit it. What the fuck? Is this, is this a Dutch thing? Jesus Christ. Brazilian fucking mother. Actually, I. Kayla, the fucking work. The fucking work. Oh, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Somebody get her off of me. Is this a, is this a short girl? Jesus Christ. Jesus fuck
first European tour, we had nine people in one van without a trailer. It was equipment and nine people in a van. Once we drove from Rome to Hanover, 22 hours. And that was just what tour was like. And the next tour, we did 50 shows in 51 days. I only had one shower. That was good. And, you know, I'd like to say those times were great, but they weren't. These times are great. I'm in a fucking punk rock band that gets to travel the world. I'm gonna have a good time. I didn't drive far till I was 21, but now I'm overcompensating. I'd like to see what morning looks like. Don't wanna drink pint after pint. I wanna wake up without feeling sick, but I can't cause I'm a drug abusing alcoholic. I can't cause I'm a drug abusing alcoholic. I can't cause I'm a drug abusing alcoholic I can't cause I'm a drug abusing alcoholic Hydrocodone was pretty great For hangovers and late night hangs I decided to spend my life Having the best of times It's too bad most of them I'll probably forget And now I know what morning looks like But only when I greet it from the previous night My friends are telling me I need to find a clinic but I won't cause I'm a drug addicted alcoholic 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 Can't stop taking drugs That's it, you're right There's not a lot of drugs people need to follow new idea uh, for fucking drum tour. tour. It's called Let's Rock. Follow me. Where we go? This is how the game goes. You gotta throw a rock and break a plate, then you get a beer. We also got panties for sale. You can buy panties here. You know, we got rock throwing, we got panty wearing, we got getting nuts. Just like uh Blahpalooza. <laughs> It's all fun. Like what you see on stage is is 100% natural. It really is. I mean, yes, we have a list of songs we're going to play, but most of the time, I switch when I'm talking on the mic. I switch the songs up depending on the mood of the crowd, the mood of us. You know, like try and try and keep a certain energy going. But all the talk, all of the goofing around, all of the making fun of Eric Melvin's ugly face, that is all um, ad lib. It's all spur of the moment.
I still enjoy traveling. I mean, it's tiring being away from my family, and, or, or hard being with my family and my kids and my dogs and my comfort. But when I'm home, I'm always looking for places to travel to. It's just in my nature. I've been, I've been traveling for, what, how long has the band been together? 83, 36 years. So we've been traveling for 35 years because we went on our first tour a year after we were together. The traveling can be very rough, can be really hard on your body and your mind. You gotta rest a lot. It's uh, sometimes you don't get enough sleep, but you try to nap when you can. What does music mean to me? Yeah. It's, uh, to me, it means uh, a way to express yourself. It's an outlet to get out whatever it is that's going on in your life, all your feelings and emotions, whatever, you know. And so it's just an outlet to, to get everything out. And, and once everything's out, you start having fun, and you start having a good time. Yeah, that's the one show that's really gonna, really gonna stand out for me, is the Madrid show. Because I actually didn't expect much from that show. I don't know why, I was just like, it was a big room, it felt like we were in a place that we shouldn't be in. You know, and the, like I said, the Backstreet Boys were there the night before, I'm kinda like, this isn't what we do. This isn't the kind of place we play. And it fucking went off. It went off. Yeah, you remember when I told you to film backstage? Mm -hmm. Then I film backstage when something is going on. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear this? What does that sound like? Oh, how about I hit a little beat? No? How about a wet one? I'll tell you, this is this is how this came about. So, I watched a uh, Simple Plan set that day, and the drummer gets from behind the drums, and he gets out, and he jumps out, and he crowd surfs, and it looked pretty cool. They're, you know, everyone's really nice, and they're holding him up, and they, oh, this is so great, and they got mostly girls there, and they're polite and nice to him, and then he gets off and goes back up, and it's all good. So I had that image in my mind. I thought, oh, I'm gonna get out there, and I'm gonna crowd surf, and everyone's gonna be cool to me. But our crowd, it's a bunch of drunk dudes. So when I jump out there, it's a bunch of like, I got your punk rock right here for you, mate. Yeah, I was getting slapped in the fucking face, like hard. I was like, I was like, ah, ah, completely slapped, senseless. We're like, whap, and I was seeing stars, like, oh my God. And I was like, get me the fuck out of here. And finally the security pulled me through and I got off and I even confronted the crowd. I said, one of you slap me senseless. <laughs> yeah, so there's my experience of uh, crowd surfing after 15 years. <laughs> How about that? Who knew? England, huh?
So after this tour, we go straight into Punk and Drubic in the U.S., which is, uh, we haven't been there in over a year because we got banned. You know, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't, I could be totally wrong, but I don't expect much of a to-do, much of a, like, a, like, all right, you, we're glad you guys are back from the fans because everybody has such short attention span of what's going on in the world with all of the different news. Every day there's another drama, every day there's another this, another that. So what happened to us a year ago or what we did a year ago in Vegas, I think people have forgotten about that by now. So I don't think it's really that big of a deal that we're coming back and playing the US now. Does that make sense? Because everybody's so, you know, their attention is so short. But I'm happy, I'm really happy. It's gonna be good to come back and hopefully everything will be just fine this time around. Hopefully no one opens their mouth. <laughs> This is a site where Anarchy Camp happened last year, but now it's called Camp Anarchy. They changed the name because uh, it's actually not my festival. Last year was. So we're playing because we didn't play last year, and uh, we figured we got to play because all the kids that came last year. So it should be a good show. Time to make some reservations for next year's Anarchy Camp. On the sax, Mr. JR! Chris from Lesson Jake, and we just spent a month in Europe on the Punk and Drubbit tour with Bad Religion, No Effects, um, ourselves, Anti Flag, Bomb Pops, uh, Real McKenzie's, uh, a whole list of bands. It was awesome. Lots of people, lots of fun.
going to say, the I know we fucked up out. in Vegas with the country stuff. What we meant to say was Western musicians. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right, I'm ready to go. <clears throat> I'm ready to go. That's good. Are we ready? I'm ready. It's a dream. Oh, oh, fantasy dreamy. Dreamy. Hello. Hey. Hey. Oh, I sound good. Sounds good here. I don't know if anybody knows this, but we didn't play here last year. But do you know the real reason? Didn't feel like it. They didn't show up the year before, so it was perfect to have them back the second year, because it really was Mike's vision with me and Cameron of putting Camp Anarchy together. This is our best song, best off X song, so everyone get excited. Last time I saw Mike was at Camp Anarchy, and I gave him a big hug on stage. We took a great couple of great photos together. We, you know, we said, I, you know, I said we're better together. You know, we we created, we we created a moment in time of magic. Maybe they'll do it again. Maybe they'll have you know the cool venues and the whole kind of way after the the end of COVID and and figure that out. I don't know. Honestly, don't really care. Uh, I'm on to doing my other things. I hope nothing but the best for Mike. I hope nothing but the best for Cameron. They're great human beings and they're hardworking guys. And Mike is, Mike's a, Mike's a visionary in, in many, many ways. Um, and I'm, I'm doing new things. I've, I've retired from the music business essentially now. Um, and I'm, I'm doing new shit and I'm happy and, and I hope no ill will on anyone. We got enough fucking problems in this world to harbor any bullshit over a fucking music festival.
go. <laughs> I bet you want to ask me what I've learned after all this. Yeah. Where am I looking at you? You can look at me. Okay. So, Pungadrobic. It's been going for, I don't know, about two years now. And uh, it pretty much sums up how my life goes and my philosophies on life, which is, uh, it sounds trite, but the saying, you win some, you lose some, it's just... It's how you got to think about life. Because, uh, yeah, I won some and I lost some. And whatever, it's life. It all comes out in the end. I usually come out ahead because uh, if you do something right, you probably uh, you probably do okay. There's, uh, there's two ways that people think about business. Uh, there are people who want to make money and they try to make something cool to make money. And then there are those of us who just like to do cool things and think of, oh, how can we make money doing this? Uh, we always win because, uh, you know, that's why we all started punk rock, to start a cool band. We didn't start it for money, you know, and pretty much everything I do, things that don't make sense. Why not do things that make life interesting? That's what Punkadrobic gives to me. It's uh, something no one's done before. Bring a bunch of friends on tour. Get people drunk. We're doing something cool. And it'll probably, hopefully people will keep going. And uh, it'll get weirder and weirder and more absurd. Punkadrobic, what could possibly go wrong? We're professional punkers, we come from the suburbs after 15 years. We're oh, it's wood! Oh, yeah. 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 We're 30, not looking so pretty. At least we got a beat up accordion. What are, what are you gonna do now? I'm doing this, I'm drinking a beer in a little clown car. usually works, but it ran out of gas last night. It ran out of electricity. Oh, 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 Jesus. Ah. Oh. No, ran out of juice. Only goes backwards. Come on, dude. And just don't do it around me. Stick with what you know. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. With that sin and wine and punk karaoke. Sing it, sing it, sing it. Buy me a Bex beer or pass me a bong. Give me some push pills, I'll sing you this song. Open another big box of cheap wine. We're over 30, we're doing just fine.
song Open another big box of cheap wine If you take the low road then I'll take the high Now we start uh, Punk and Dubbuck in the US Next month Which one? Portland For Portland will be the first Punk and Dubbuck show Since uh, The incident in Las Vegas and, uh, you know, like I said, I don't get excited about a lot of things, but I'm pretty excited about playing Portland. And we're going to play The Decline with an orchestra in Portland, so it'll be special. I might even get emotional. You know, I have feeling. I don't have feelings. I have feeling. I think it's happy. Besides that, it's just, ooh. So, that's all I got. Cool, thank you. See y'all at Okie Dogs. See you.